Panasonic. We might remember some of them. Some of them may sound very ancient from today's perspective. But 10 years later, how many of them were still left in the top five? Any number? One to five. Two. I can hear two. More or less? One? One? OK, so we get some ones, one, twos here. Let's have a look. 2010, and again, this is already three years ago. But actually, we see 10 years later, yeah, kind of one still left. And as we know, also a little bit, uh, you know, at that stage already, uh, already shaking. Uh, and Ericsson, together with the merger of, uh, with, with Sony, kind of also still there. But interestingly, if we look into these, these players in between, number two, number three, number four, the interesting interesting story is these players were somebody who either didn't exist before, like if you look into research in motion, or Samsung LG, players which basically didn't have a very kind of prominent track record in the mobile industry. Players who basically emerged, you know, not out of nowhere, they had been existing for a while, but they were simply not on our map. We didn't have the foresight tools to actually look into these companies. Our uh, competitive analysis and our uh, search for uh, positioning us in, uh, ourselves on the market was based on the notion of only looking into our existing industry boundaries. We weren't able to anticipate changes that were coming from, from beyond. And uh, in order to kind of lead such a change within an organization, here also another major uh, organizational challenge that was experienced is again something I, I tried to summarize with this quote. Again, a vice president of a US-based mobile service provider told me, you know what, Frederick, actually, it's not really about convergence. It's about collision. Whenever you have two industries that evolved independently and you're trying to merge them, you actually have a fundamental problem uh, of, because of mindset. That's where it really starts, mindset and language. People speak a very different language, and people think in terms of very different things. So basically what we are seeing within the organizations when we try to lead innovation, lead a change, is actually more of a collision than a convergence. We need to manage the, the clash. We need to manage the collision of cultures, uh, technological expertise, uh, mindsets that we all need to kind of bridge within our organization. And if you talk to Russell's Reynolds Associates, uh, one of the biggest, um, yeah, basically senior headhunters uh, in, in, in this field, they actually in a recent study identified convergence as one of the major recruiting challenges for organizations. Because it's very difficult to find this type of talent that is actually able to lead innovation in such a way that is not only kind of focusing on managing knowledge creation in a specific area, but actually is able to bridge the gaps between disciplines. 